when you're an innocent man and they're telling you you got to spend three years of your life away from your family in jail, you know, we're not going to take that. And he felt that the justice system would, would serve him. But one thing he's not realizing is that they've frozen all your assets to where you have no money. He had to take a court-appointed attorney. You can't fight it. I want to try to give me 15 years. I couldn't fathom it. I couldn't. Like, some murderers get less time than that. How do you justify giving him that much f***ing time? Would have been better be dead than going through this. Because when you feel you didn't do, uh, I don't want to be emotional. So I don't even want to think about it. Because that's when I thought my kids really needed me, but it just took me out of their life. And the first time my wife and kids came to see me, yeah, that was the day. That was the first day I break down. I cried, my wife cried, my kids cried. And... Seeing my father for the first time, having to go into the, the facility, at that point, he's just a number in the system. And, have, and having him come in and... Um, and hold his family. And I have to put myself in his reality that he has to go into this, into a cell. And then for me to have to get in the car and drive away, and he has to stay there, it floored me big time. He wrote me a letter, said, never let the family see you cry. I still got a letter. My father was never really there when I was competing as an athlete. But now that they took my father from me to where he couldn't come at all, even if he wanted to, it grew the chip that was on my shoulder. I talk to my wife like twice a day. And my kids, I try to call them like twice a week, letting them realize that, hey, this is not the end of the world. They should forge ahead. Do the best they can. Being Nigerian, we were already enriched with that that strong culture that we had to we had to go to get an education. We had to be able to get a job so we can provide for our families, and that's what my dad continued to push even while he wasn't here. I remember after 2012, I sparred for the first time. I just knew that I was gonna embark on fighting in the UFC. I had to go have a conversation with him about it, and I remember at that time. They had moved my father from the facility that he was in to where now you have to see him through a glass. So one day he came to me at the jailhouse. Dad, this is what I'd like to do. I said, for what? Why do you want to do this? And of course he's like, no, I don't necessarily want you to do it and this and that. So I showed him the clips of me sparring. I said, well, behind the glass, I told him, if that's what you want to do, you got my blessings. Personally, it meant a lot to me, but I think it was also still keeping him in the loop and letting him know that he still has a grasp on his family. I moved down to South Florida, working with the Black Zillions down there, and I could always find someone that I can see as that placeholder. The guys, the men that I looked up to, like Rashad Evans, and just the way they carry themselves, they all had certain qualities that my father had. Because when those men spoke or when they gave me any advice about certain things, I listened. And then the opportunity presented itself. The ultimate fighter goes to South Florida. Two of the best MMA teams in the world compete. I remember the last time I visited my father, he told me that their workrooms, they have TVs in there. And he told me, he said that, that UFC stuff was always in on the TV there. And so 
It was kind of a little extra push for me to, to commit to doing the show because there was a possibility that my father was gonna be able to see it. I'm fighting for my, my future. My life, my family's future. I'm fighting for financial security for my daughter. Who will represent your team for the first fight? Please step forward. The first fight that Kamara had was very nerve-wracking for me. The whole prison knew that he was fighting, so everybody was sitting down watching. So I'm like, this is really what my son is getting into? And after the fight, you see people coming to hug me. Inmates will come meet me, they'll come tell me, say, hey, your son is gonna be a champ one day. The winner is Usman. I can see a change in my dad. I can see the excitement. I can see life being brought into him. His fights were the highlights while I was in prison. I couldn't tell you what it did for me mentally. It was instrumental.